Okay, a very good morning everyone. So welcome to our yearly tips for fun, uh, winning MOHI Fundamental Research Grant Scheme FRGS 2024 workshop. This is an annual workshop that is uh, conducted by IPSR in order for us to actually give feedback and also tips to the applicants on how to get a good, how to write a good proposal for your FRGS application as well as how to ensure that you will win this grant. Okay? So today, uh, I am Prof. Dr. Smuti Sethuri here. We will be moderating this section on behalf of Institute of uh, Postgraduate Studies Research in Utah. And today, we have two esteemed speakers with us. The first one will be Prof. R. R. Dr. Huang Yu Feng. He is from IKC FES. And the second speaker is Prof. R. R. Dr. Ku Hui Ling. Both of them have secured many international grants, local grants, and also they are the reviewers for the MOHI Fundamental Research Grant Scheme at the ministry level. So without further ado, let me welcome our first speaker today, Professor R.R. Dr. Huang Yuk Feng. Prof. Huang, the floor is here. Okay, thank you, Prof. Sumati. Um, um, before, sorry, uh, Prof. Huang, before you start. So we will have a Q&A section at 10.30 to 11.00. But however, if you have any doubt and so on that you want to ask the panel of speakers, you can always put it in the chat and I'll read to the panel later during the Q&A section. So that would be preferably because we have a Q&A section, All right? So thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, so I'm Huang. I'm from LKC FES. So today I'm here to share with you the application guidelines for FRGS, okay? For your information, the guideline I'm sharing today actually is for the version 2024-23. Okay, this is based on the 2023 because uh, I know all of you will be going apply for the uh, 2024 cycle. However, the guideline for 2024 is not released, not yet released by Mohi. Okay, so today we will share the 2023 so that you can kickstart your preparation for the uh, grant proposal. Okay, I believe that the the, two, the new version, the coming version, may not have so much changes lah. Okay, so I think you can base you can prepare your proposal based on the 2023 versions. When the 2024 version come out, and then we try to revise your proposal accordingly lah. Right. So today, uh, this this is these are the uh, the outlines for my presentation. So first, I will start with the general application criteria. Okay, so I will mention who are the eligible uh, researcher to apply for this grant, and then who will be your team members, and also some other criteria related to the uh, general applications process. Lah. Okay, expected output also, I will mention this one. This is about the expert and the publication. Okay, maybe it's a bit too early for, for us to mention this one because we are still in the application process. But however, I think it's, it's good for us to know the uh, what will be the output and then what actually, especially those already have the potential uh, postgraduate student. Okay, and then finally will be the supervision criteria. Okay. And then, okay, sorry, one more. Okay, the research information. Okay, we will talk about the research domain, cluster selection, and then SPV 2030, and also the SDG selection. I think this, uh, these are very common for all of us. Lah. Okay, you just select accordingly. Okay, if not mistaken, this round uh, start, started last year. Actually, we will need to select the ministry or uh, ministry, okay, which is actually related or uh, most relevant to your research uh, proposal. Okay, and then lastly is the uh, contents of the proposal. So we will start from uh, the beginning, how to fill in the form towards the end of the form. Okay, so okay, so this is the general application uh, criteria. So who is eligible to apply for the grant? So basically, the FRGS open to all the full-time academic staff including professor, associate professors, assistants, and professors, senior lecturers, lecturers, and with minimum qualification of master degree, right? So we know that if you are the lecturer, I believe uh, you should have you have your master degree. So this is the minimum requirement. Then next is uh, they must be the Malaysian. If okay, not, not necessarily must be Malaysian PI. So if you are the you are a Malaysian, okay. So as a Malaysian PI, okay, either you are the permanent staff or contract staff, okay, you are also eligible to apply for the grant. Okay, must apply at least one Malaysian core researcher. So this is very common. Uh, we have our core researcher for any grant. Okay, so as 
uh, if you are the PI, okay, means you are the principal investigator. So you need to have at least one Malaysian core researcher. Okay, the core researcher must be a Malaysian college. Uh, this this core researcher usually with the one will take over your your grant. If let's say if you want to uh, resign or you quit from the university, so when you quit from the university, you are not allowed to bring along the grant with you to the new 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 institution, right? So you need to. Uh, Leave the gland with Utah, so someone will take over the gland. Okay, so this core researcher must be a permanent staff in the same field as of expertise. So the the researcher must be same field with you. Okay, so usually you need to select in the application form. You need to select next appointed leader. Okay, next appointed leader, meaning that this leader will take over your gland. Let's say you are not uh, no longer uh, can can leave the grant. Okay, so this one you can refer to the guideline 2023 under item 2.1.1. Okay. Okay, let's say if you are not a Malaysian, okay, non-Malaysian PI, okay, doesn't matter you are a permanent uh, staff or contract staff. So you must appoint at least one Malaysian core researcher for the, from the same institution who is the permanent staff in the same field of expertise as the next appointed leader. So basically, whether you are Malaysian or non-Malaysian, okay, the criterion for the uh, appointment of the core researcher as the next appointed leader, they are the same. Okay, you must appoint someone from the same field and then also from the same institution and also uh, a Malaysian, okay, and also a Malaysian. So PI who have uh, active FRGS, okay, for those already secure your FRGS, so you can only apply as PI for a new project if the existing FRGS you are holding has achieved 75% of the completion, okay, meaning that uh, we know that we have to sub submit our progress report every six months, okay, so if you have completed your existing FRGS, which you are the PI, okay, you are the PI. If you are not the PI, so it doesn't matter, okay. If you are not the PI, meaning that actually no issue, you can apply for the FRGS grant in the coming cycle as the PI, okay. If you are not a PI, but however, you are holding a grant as a PI, principal investigator, so you have to make sure that your existing FRGS must have completed 75%, okay, in terms of the uh, technical report and also the financial report. Academic staff who are on the sub practical leave or study leave. Okay, let's say you are taking your study leave or sub practical leave. Okay, so you are working away from Utah. So either in overseas or local for more than six months from the closing date of the application is not eligible to apply as PI. Okay, again, you are not eligible to apply for PI, but you can join as a core researcher. Okay. However, they can be a core researcher, their status must be updated by RMC. Okay, so if you are actually working away as uh, or, or you're doing your sub practical leave or study leave, make sure you update your status at, inside the My Grant uh, website. Okay, inside the My Grant website, you can actually click for your personal profile. You have to do the update and then our RMC need to uh, approve Okay, before you can submit the before you can join, okay, join the submission with your PI. Okay. PI must have at least one year of service or contract from the closing date of application. Let's say our application date is next year, maybe sometime in January or February. So you if you are the contract staff, okay, so make sure your contract will be uh, will not be expired within one year from the application date. Okay, that, this is for PI. Uh, if for core researcher, I think no issue. Okay, research officer from research institute. We know that uh, under government, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, research institutes. Okay, such as the uh, MADI. Okay, for those under the agriculture or NARIM for those under the water. Okay, so you can actually invite uh, those research officer from the research institute. Okay, to join as a core researcher. Okay, but they can be your core researcher only. You cannot appoint them as the next appointed leader. Okay, as I mentioned, next appointed leader must be from the same institution and must be from the same field. Okay, and then also if you have post postdoctorate or uh, postdoctorate student postdoc uh, who have active contract 
okay, throughout the whole project period. Okay, so this one we have to be careful uh, because we know that uh, in Utah, uh, the appointment for post doctoral actually is actually in yearly basic. Okay, maximum is two years. Okay, maximum is two years. So meaning that if the postdoc status must be active throughout the whole project period, okay, your project period can be two years if you apply for a master proposal, a master student proposal, or can be three years if you apply for a PhD student proposal. So meaning that for our our situation at Utah, maybe you can only put in the postdoc if the postdoc, uh, if you apply for a master study proposal, okay, which is actually two years lah, because our maximum duration of postdoc uh, appointment is only up to two years. Okay, so um, can be appointed as a co-researcher, your postdoc, okay, and then must attach the appointment letter lah, from Utah, okay, but that, uh, uh, in my opinion, I don't, I don't actually encourage you to put your postdoc. Okay, I don't really encourage you to put the postdoc because it's actually you need to fulfill the two years. Uh, but provided the appointment date, starting date, is actually same with the starting date of the grant. Actually, I think it's not easy to, I uh, mean, uh, to to get such a um, uh, <laughs> Good luck to get to, to can can start the two things together. Okay, not applicable at Utah lah, since our uh, postdoc is only yearly basic. Okay, and then also our postdoc actually if yearly basic means the appointment letter only state uh, one year appointment. So if you want to prove two years, I think no way lah, Okay, so I believe this one we can forget about it. Okay, for postdoc, uh, postdoc. Okay, only one research officer or one postdoc is allowed to be the core researcher, okay? So either one, okay? You want to put a postdoc, you cannot put a research officer from the Research Institute of Government, okay? And then other university also, they may have the so-called uh, RA, research assistant or assist, uh, okay? So that you can also put them, okay? But can only put one, either your postdoc or your research officer, okay? And only be a core researcher on it. Okay, your team member, Minimum two core researcher. Okay, as I mentioned just now, you yourself as the PI, and then you need to appoint the next appointed leader who is your first core researcher. Okay, so you need to appoint another core researcher. So the second core researcher may not be, not necessarily must be from the exactly same field with you because uh, sometimes the project actually is the multidiscipline type of uh, research proposal, or maybe uh, the Second uh, researcher actually can help you in some some other thing in the proposal. Of course, the expertise from this second core researcher also can help the proposal. Okay, cannot be someone actually totally nothing to do. Uh, not not relevant not relevant to the content of the proposal. Okay, so maximum five core researcher. Okay, meaning that maximum six members in the team. Okay, one PI plus five core researcher. Okay, all the core researcher should pay to place different role, okay? So you need to make sure that you need to justify because in the application form, you need to write down, okay, put down who, uh, who are the role by the researcher, okay? Which part of the research proposal need to need the support from this researcher, okay? Except for the next appointed leader, because the guy also from the same field, but even from the same field also, I believe that you can put them actually under different uh, school of work, okay? Under different school of work. So make sure there is no overlapping. Okay, there's no overlapping. If you have overlapping, means that actually you you actually uh you already you have extra uh, core research which is actually not necessary. Okay, for the client, I think this one will give a very bad impression to the evaluator. Okay, so don't simply put core research. Okay, other criteria: the research work must be conducted in Malaysia. So if let's say you want to do carry out a case study or even your you have a study area or study field or whatever. Okay, or you want to con uh. All this actually the study area must be in Malaysia. Okay, you also the must be conducted means even though you want to run the experiment. Okay, you need a laboratory work. So the report or the lab or the the experiment experiment must be conducted in Malaysia. Okay, you are not allowed to do it uh, in overseas. So for PhD and master student must based in Malaysia throughout their whole study period. So make sure that let's say you take the uh, foreign student, overseas student, or even Malaysian student. So make sure that throughout the whole study period, okay, their study period, so they are actually based in Malaysia, okay. 
every PI can only submit one application for each application phase, meaning that for this, for example, for the coming uh, phase of coming cycle 2024, you can only submit one application, okay, as a PI. Okay, doesn't, doesn't matter you have, you, even though you don't have any existing uh, FRGS grant, you still only eligible, eligible to submit one application. Okay, however, they can be the core researcher for other applications. So no worry, okay, even though you apply as a PI for, for a grant, okay, doesn't mean you cannot join other researcher as a core. Okay, you can join other proposal as a core researcher. So expected outputs, okay. So of course, uh, there are bas basically there are two basic outputs uh, expected from Mohi. First is the expert or talent, okay, which is actually our postgraduate student. Second is the publication, okay. For three years, for three year projects, okay, must produce minimum one PhD or two master only, okay. So if you apply for three years project, usually is definitely this is for the PhD student. Okay, can only put in one PhD student and you cannot say I put a three year project, but I put in two PhD student. Okay, there is only one PhD student. Or if you think you are not, maybe you are not, uh, not uh, you don't want to, uh, you have no confidence or you don't want to support why a PhD student or your preference is to have two master student instead of one PhD student. So you also can put in two master student to replace one PhD student. Okay, and then they are must be under the full time study mode. Okay, cannot do a part time. Okay, can it be a one must one PhD and one master? No, this okay. This is a question. Okay, can can I just put in one master and one PhD? Okay, no, this is actually will be over over archive. But budget will not be approved by Mohi for the second student because let's say like because PhD student you have to put the budget let's say uh two thousand five hundred per month. Okay, for master maybe two thousand. Okay, if you put one PhD student, okay, so you can, and then you put another master student all in will be 4,500, right? So if you put, how about if you put two master student, okay, two master student, one master student already uh, 2,000, okay, per month. So if two master student will be 4,000. 4, However, uh, because this is a, if this is a three year project, so two master student can uh, not necessarily must be overlapping. Okay, you may start a master student from year one to year two, and then you may have the overlapping uh, from year two to year three. Okay, you can arrange the 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 work okay accordingly. Okay, for the two master student, but uh, actually, my personal opinion is we don't want to take the risk lah. So you if you want to put a PhD student, just put one PhD to one PhD student for three year project. If you want to do a two year project because maybe you think like the scope of your proposal actually not sufficient for three years or not sufficient for a PhD student. You may just take in, you may just put one master student. Okay. For two year project, put one master student. For three years project, put one PhD student. Okay. Even though there's no restriction for you to put two master students for a three years project, but I think it's actually we don't want to take the risk. Okay. Because as we know that the evaluator from the Mohi side actually they are all from different university and then they may have different th thinking or mindset. Okay, we don't want to take the risk because we don't know who is who is going to evaluate our proposal. Okay, how if they, they don't agree with the two master students for three years? Okay, they may deduct your mark. So we don't want to take the risk because we try to score as high as possible. Okay, because the assessment criteria is based on the mark. Okay, you can score. Okay, the highest mark you can score, the highest chance you actually can uh, secure the gun. Okay, for a two year project, must produce minimum one master student only under full time study mode. Okay, can it be two master student? Okay, no. Okay, this is not allowed. Okay. Publication. Okay, as I say, this is the second output. Okay, from FRGS. Okay, so every project must produce minimum two index journal articles. Okay, one of them must be indexed in. WOS, which is the web of size, okay, which is the high impact journal. Okay, other one can be in Scopus, ERA, or my site. Okay, for your information, uh, I don't know, maybe recently I'm not sure about the Utah, maybe later uh, Prof. Sumati can give us the advice. Uh, because there is an issue from other from the M for from MOHE. Okay, for publication, because usually we can put in some allocation for the publication fees, okay, because some some open journals, um, they actually need to collect the fees for the publication. So, uh, what he actually instructed that uh, we are not allowed 
to publish in uh, Hindawi, M M MPDI, and also uh, Frontier. Okay, Frontier, Hindawi, and MPDI. So you have to avoid these three publishers. They are the publisher. Okay, you have to avoid to put in okay any journal under these three publisher. Okay, make sure you have one at least one paper in WOS. I think no problem if you want to put two papers under WOS. Okay. Okay, come to the supervision criteria. Is it important to know the supervision criteria now? Okay, because you haven't secured the grant. Actually, this is actually some uh it, this is important for you to know the the criteria also, okay, before you apply the grant. Okay, so that you can have you can plan it accordingly. Okay, so main supervisor for the PhD or master student must be the PI. Okay, or the core researcher from the same institution. Let's say you maybe you will be away after you, in your plan. Maybe you after you secure the grant. Okay, you may be away, working away. You are not eligible or you are not able to be the PI. So there's no issue because you can appoint one of the core researcher, but must be from the same institution to be the main supervisor for the postgraduate student. Okay, for non-Malaysia PI must supervise Malaysian PhD and master student only. OK, so what is the difference between men supervisor from Malaysia and men supervisor not from Malaysia? Meaning that men supervisor from Malaysia, as I say, when you supervise a postgraduate student, actually you can take in our local Malaysian student and also you can take in the overseas foreign student okay, if you are Malaysian. However, if you are not a Malaysian, OK, non-Malaysian PI, OK, you want to take in the student, you cannot take the foreign student, OK? Uh, you have to take in the local Malaysian student. Okay, doesn't matter the student do PhD or master. So the student must be from Malaysia if you are a non-Malaysian PI. Okay, for a project that produce two postgraduate students. Okay, for example, the two master student. Okay, one of them must be Malaysian. Okay, let's say you you still want to opt for the three year project, but take in two master student instead of one PhD student. So one of them, one of the master student must be a local Malaysian, cannot be both student from overseas, okay? But as I say, uh, we better avoid this uh, three-year proposal to take in two master student, okay? If you have a three-year proposal, means the scope or the objective of your or proposal actually sufficient to be, uh, to take a PhD student instead of two master student. Okay, research information. Oh, this is the thing you need to select when you fill in the form. I think maybe I just uh, uh, have a quick explanation. Okay, basically there are seven because this thing they may keep on changing. I believe that uh, recently, if not mistaken, they actually removed the SPV 2030. I'm not sure. Okay, we have to wait for the new uh, revised guideline 2024. OK, so basically the research domain, there are seven research domain and then each research domain, they have the sub research domains. OK, and then also cluster, we have eight research clusters. So make sure you select your uh, domain and cluster uh, uh, appropriately. OK, because uh, if you select wrongly, so let's say you are supposed to be under domain A, you put down domain B. OK, so your proposal will be sent to the leader of domain B. OK, when your proposal is sent to the leader of domain B, OK, so if the leader is good enough, they may actually transfer your application to domain A. However, if they con if they uh, if they refuse to transfer and then continue to assess your as uh, your proposal under domain B, so definitely your proposal will be out of scope. OK, so domain and cluster selection are very important, OK, including the subdomain. OK, and then we have the 10 and 10 Malaysia uh, Science, Technology, Innovation and Economy, which is my uh, my side. So this is important because uh, the the MOHI, they need to know actually uh, your grant actually more to uh, which this is the one actually you, you can you can have to select uh, which ministry. OK, if not mistaken, this is the one you have to know your grant actually, for example, if your proposal actually related to agricultural uh, Science or agricultural engineering. So maybe you need will be you have your the most relevant ministry will be the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay, you are talking if you are doing about something about the water, so you need to send to the most water. Or if you are doing for science relevant, you can put under mostly. Okay, so be careful lah if you want to put the ministry because some of the ministry actually they provide the grant. Okay, if you start put in someone one some ministry actually they can provide the grant. Maybe more he will 
reconsider your application because you actually can apply under that particular ministry. Okay, this is my personal opinion. Okay, share our uh, prosperity version, vision 2030. This is the one I'm not sure whether it will remain in our next cycle or not. Okay, sustainable development goal SDG. This one definitely will remain. Okay, you need to select the uh, SDG and then when you come uh, put up your proposal, you try to justify how your proposal actually relate to any of the SDG. Okay, I think there are about 13. Uh, I forgot how many SDG already. So you must link to as many as possible. Okay, as many as possible SDG, of course, must be relevant. Okay, so these are the seven uh, research domain I mentioned. Okay, I will just flip through, and then this is this is, these are the research clusters. Okay, and then the ten and ten. My side in my slide actually I I hide some of the detailed information about this. Uh, if you have the copy of my slide, actually you are able to see those uh, slide I already uh, uh, those hidden slide. Okay, you can you can read it. Okay, so this is the thing. You can have a look. Okay, you can choose it for your proposal. Okay. So this is the metric, okay, how the social economy and the technology, okay. The relationship between the social economy driver and the size and technology driver. Okay, so this is the SPE, okay, SPV, sorry, yeah, SPV. So this is also uh, also called, you have to select the key economic growth uh, activities for your research grant. Okay, this one is to help the government for the for those uh B40 low income group. So whether your proposal can help this group of people or not, okay, you will get uh, additional credit. Okay, and then you also can help to uh those um Sabah Sarawak or those the disabled or the you the woman, okay, and children or senior citizen. Okay, this one may be more uh, relevant to the social science proposal. Okay. Okay, these are the 15 key uh, uh, key economic growth activities. Okay, so you have to choose one uh, if the if the thing still remain in the uh, application form next year. Okay, SDG, there are okay, there are 17. Okay, there are 17 SDG. So this SDG actually proposed by okay, come up from United Nations, okay, United Nations, okay, under the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Okay, for sustainable development. Okay, so this SDG is not only in Malaysia. Also, I think major, most of the country in the world also follow this SDG. Okay, so this is uh, this is very important. Okay, so in your proposal, you need to uh, try to link to any of the SDG. Can be more than one, and then try to put the justification and explanation. Okay, you cannot just say I my SDG related to let's say SDG thirteen. Climate action. Okay, I cannot just put uh, my proposal related to climate action SDG 13. I must put the justification. Must be have a strong justification. Okay, so these are the 17 uh, SDG. Okay, selection of ministry and agency. Okay, PI must identify and select the ministry. Okay, as I mentioned just now. Contents of proposal. So now we come to the application form. Okay, content of the proposal. First of all, you will see that. There is the executive summary that you need to generate or you want to you can actually choose to generate it automatically from the system okay the system can help you to generate the executive summary based on the objective uh, methodology or maybe even the literature review you already put in okay so but i think in my opinion you better don't actually follow the auto generated one okay executive summary try to write it yourself or prepare the executive summary yourself okay not more than 300 words okay not more than 300 words okay this should be the last part to be prepared okay of course even though executive summary put at the top of the proposal uh, a proposal form so usually this is the last part actually we should prepare after we have done the complete the proposal then only we start to prepare the executive summary okay statement in the application form Okay, please include this is the statement when you want to prepare the executive summary in the application form. You will see there is a footnote there saying that this executive summary must cover problem statement, objectives, research methodology, expected outputs, outcome, implication, and the significance of output. Okay, from the research proposal. So your 300 words of short executive summary, you need to cover all this uh, expert. Okay, you must put in the problem statement maybe in one or two sentences, okay? And then you have to list out all your objective, okay? Maybe you can rewording, reword your objective, not necessarily must copy the same sentence from the objective because you need to shorten them or maybe 
somehow lah, but you need if you have three objects three objective or four objective make sure you list uh listed make sure you list out all the objective inside the executive summary okay and then you have to mention the research methodology okay what method what model okay what formula you use and then at the end of the uh, as a great summary, you need to put expected outputs or outcomes. OK, outcomes may, may, maybe actually is the impact. Uh, outcome is impact. Some maybe cannot differentiate output and outcomes. OK, because uh, quite confusing output. For example, if you do some numerical modeling, the model itself is your output. So outcome is what the impact. If I have this model, so if people apply this model or I apply this model, to do some analysis, what will be the impact to the social and economy of the country? Impact or outcomes, okay? Implication and significant of output. Lah. So how your output can help the country. Lah. Okay, so this is actually uh, similar with the outcomes. Lah. So you can maybe put one or two sentences, okay? You try to use the justification for the SDG, for example, you can put it here uh, okay, as the significant of output. Okay, so make sure you cover all this aspect in order to score high mark for under the executive summary. Okay, and then executive summary, even though it's the last part you prepare as the uh, research as a researcher, but executive summary will be the first part read or assessed by the evaluator. Okay, the evaluator will read the executive summary before they continue with your proposal. So this is very important. Okay, to put to put up a uh, attractive. Okay, attractive and also easier to understand. Okay, don't put in some executive summary or uh, very difficult to understand. Okay, because this is the first part. The evaluator will look at your proposal before they can continue to read for the next next part. Okay, so auto generate button. Okay, you can click to let the system to generate the executive summary automatically. Okay. Okay, but however, I, uh, uh, my, my opinion is you have to prepare your own executive summary better because auto generate my, my what I noticed is actually they just simply take in the first two sentences from your problem statement, uh, take, it, take all your objective and then take maybe a few sentences from your research methodology because the the auto auto generate button actually the system not very smart okay you cannot expect the the they do the work for you okay so you have to do your own executive summary so maximum is 300 words okay propose problem statement okay this one is very important also because after the executive summary okay will be the problem statement okay highlight the problems uh lacking or gaps of your research field okay so make sure you know the gaps okay of the of your proposal between your proposal and the already or existing research or the past research, okay, between your proposal and your past research, you must identify the gaps, means anything lacking, anything not sufficient, or from the previous research, we still have problem, haven't solved the problem. So your proposal is supposed to be to, to supposed to be used, okay, to close the gaps or close the loop. Okay. So you need to highlight your problem statement. Okay, good problem statement should produce good research question. Okay, because we need to put in the research question before we put in the research objective. Okay, so where how how can you how how to how do we actually come up with the research question? So research question usually uh proposed from the research problem. Okay, you must list out the research problem, the problem statement. Okay, you list out the problem statement and then you um Come up from the statement, you actually can ask question how to solve it, why this happened. Okay, usually we use how, why, okay, what will be the solution, what will be the best methodology. Okay, so you have to come up with the question. After that, you can prepare the research objective, okay, based on the question you ask. Okay, you have to answer your question. So the answer of the question will be the research objective. Okay, and then follow up by the research methodology because, of course, you have the objective okay you have to know what are the methods to be used okay to achieve the objective okay so after research objective you can come up with the research methodology okay so all in for problem statement don't write uh too too lengthy okay because uh can too short also like not sufficient so usually plus or minus one page may do lah. but this is my own opinion if you think you need to have two pages of problem statement you have your justification then should be no problem okay but i say problem statement minimum at least least half a page lah. cannot be just uh, it's the, my, the, the, the impression is you have a very short problem statement unless the statement you put actually very precise 
okay and straight to the point okay so in other words actually you need to fit, put uh, as many at point possible okay but make sure the point you put under problem statement you are able to ask the question from the problem statement and you are able to answer the question you posted so that you can prepare uh, can come up with your research objective okay so hypothesis okay uh, uh, i'm not this hypothesis actually not compulsory for all kind of project depends if you are going to do the experimental or experimental uh, type or laboratory type of proposal okay you want to do some testing or you are the mathematician okay or physicist physicist so i think um the proposal should have a hypothesis okay however for engineering okay my my own i myself my proposal i never put any hypothesis okay if you notice that in the application form the hypothesis part actually is not compulsory okay so for social science that one i think uh, you, you 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 should have the experience whether you need to put the hypothesis okay if you put a hypothesis make sure you put in the in your proposal you have to tell how you actually prove the hypothesis okay can be prepared based on the research m and research title so hypothesis usually how to come up with a hypothesis of course the hypothesis should be linked to the research m or research title okay every research proposal should have the m there is only one m uh, for one research proposal but in order to support this m you may have uh, three to four or even five objective okay? usually one hypothesis for one research proposal over design research scope may cause failure in the delivery okay but doesn't mean you put in more scope or higher uh, more objective let's say you want to put six or seven objective so this one will become a question mark for the evaluator how could you achieve six or seven objective in two years or three years time okay so must be reasonable the number of objective okay sometimes you have to have to be clear the thing you put is objective or the research activities okay you may have a lot of activities okay maybe one research objective you may have two or three activities to support it okay so have to be clear okay the difference between research objective and research activities okay research question three to five research question will do okay so you want to put in a master study proposal two years okay so maybe you put three objective i think at least three objective for a master two years program uh, two years proposal don't put two i think two is too risky okay for a phd you can put four to five okay four to five okay based on the problem statement and hypothesis okay in general a good research question should cover what is the problem being faced as i say what why how okay usually we use this type of words okay every good research project solve some particular problems you cannot a one one single proposal won't be able to solve all the problem uh, faced by it by your field or by your research field okay don't be too greedy okay because uh, if you put in the too too big the scope okay so the evaluator, evaluator may question whether you can you are able to deliver the project or not okay so the scope must be reasonable okay what is the significance of your research why your research is needed okay so you have to highlight okay why your research is needed how what, how significant your research work to the to your research field okay to the especially to the social and also the economy okay who have other uh what have other done okay this is important because you need to identify what already done by the people whether their work sufficient or need to have further research okay so from there you can identify the gaps okay once you have the gaps every research proposal must actually the 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 main objective or a purpose of a research proposal is to close the gap or to narrow down the gap at least okay what what are your solution to the problem may mention your particular methodology and scope in brief, in, a, in brief in a very brief way how can you demonstrate that your solution is a good one okay indicate the advantages and improvement brought by your solution okay so these are the example of the research question okay the question must be answered in the research objective and maybe also mention or answer in the impact statement okay when you answer your research question okay usually the answer indi uh, indicated by the research objective and also when you come to the last part or last portion of the research proposal where you want to put where you need to put in the impact statement okay impact statement there are five impacts basically uh, society academic academia government 
industry and environment. Okay, so make sure I noticed that uh, some of the proposal, they just uh, prepare the impact for these five, uh, five, five, five sectors in one, lump, in one lump sum, one paragraph. So I would say that better we go, we do the justification or prepare the statement one by one. Okay, your the impact of your the impact of your proposal to the society. Okay, you have to put one or two sentences. Okay, and then second paragraph, you put the impact on of your proposal to the academia. Okay, one or two paragraph, and then to the government. Okay, government you can try to the policy or SDG, and then related to the industry and, and related to the environment. Okay, make sure you have a comprehensive. Okay, justification for these five impacts. Okay, because this actually also carry uh, some marks. Okay, it's also very important to tell the evaluator whether how important is your uh, proposal. Okay, literature review, majority references should be from the latest five years. So let's say we submit our proposal next year, 2024. Latest five years means from 2023 backward. 23, 22, 21, 20, and 19. Okay, so your so-called latest five years should be from 2019 to 2023. Okay, but majority, meaning that majority for us, majority may be 66% to 70% or two-thirds, okay, must be from the uh, latest five years. Okay, means the references, okay, the paper you review must be from 2019 to 2023 majority la, must majority must be from these five years okay doesn't mean you cannot review other papers okay you still can review some papers actually before published before 2019 no problem even though 2000 or 1990 something because if you think the paper is very important maybe the paper is, is talk about talking about the the basic concept of the method you are going to apply in your proposal okay so majority only uh, majority must be from latest five years okay two thirds or seven sixty seven percent uh, to be uh, more exact okay one to two pages of review will do okay don't write five or ten pages of research review okay no need okay must cover all the research scope and subtopic uh. make sure all the research review you done actually cover all the objective okay all the methods you use okay all the method you use okay you propose in your methodology literature review should be carried out based on your research question okay identify the research gap put a summary at the end of literature review so towards the end of literature review okay you cannot just review the method one by one after that you just stop there after method one you review method one method two method three method four method five you just stop there you must make a short summary or conclusion based on what you have reviewed okay put one short paragraph to conclude okay to conclude your literature review okay or as a summary this is very important because that part you actually your research gap okay you must highlight your research gap towards the end of the literature review Okay, research objective must answer the research question and solve the research gaps identified through the literature review. Okay, optimum number of research objective may be three to four. If this is the three year, pro pro three year proposal, you can put three objective. Okay, if you are, oh, sorry, three years proposal, you can put four objective or even five. Okay, but if this is a two years only for a master study, I think we should stop at three objective. Lah. Okay, it seems like not um very hard to justify if you have four objectives but you put the project duration only two years okay if you can have four objectives you should propose a three-year project okay objective must be short must be short and precise okay make sure people can understand your objective okay maybe the best one objective should be maybe two two lines okay two lines don't put the objective uh, uh, consists of four or five lines okay so in fact research title should be some should be the summary of the research objective okay so make sure um, your research title can reflect your research objective or the research objective okay use appropriate fundamental words okay because this is the frgs is a fundamental type of research okay research grant so make sure the word you use in your title okay in your title and also in your uh, objective use the fundamental type of words okay okay for example to investigate or to formulate okay to formulate all these actually there are uh, 
uh, fundamental type of words. OK, same for the research title and some do not use any words in the title can also. OK, doesn't mean you must put the word in the title. OK, depends on how you propose your title, but you should have the word in your you must have the word in your objective. So make sure the word you use actually is the fundamental type of word. OK, must be smart. Objective, this is the very typical uh, concept. OK, your objective must be smart. What, is, what does it mean? Must be specific. OK, cannot put a too general objective. OK, cannot be too general your objective. If you say uh, to to investigate what you have to be more specific or put in your the, met, the method or the formula you use in the objective, also no problem. OK, must be specific and measurable. OK, must be measurable meaning that you cannot put to understand okay to understand something because we know that if you put to understand how to measure the understanding level of a person so this is not measurable okay so your objective must be measurable okay achievable okay possible cannot be put in something like similar impossible to achieve okay must be relevant to the research group or research topic okay and thumb out meaning that cannot be put an objective from uh, maybe you need or four or five years, okay, also cannot complete the work, okay? So must be smart. Okay, methodology must match with the research objective, okay? Of course, you when you prepare your methodology, you should answer, you are actually trying to answer the objective one by one, okay? So the first part of your methodology will be actually trying to explain how you achieve your objective one, and then followed by objective two, objective three. Make sure you won't miss out any single part or any single objective, okay, in your methodology. Okay, answer the research objective one by one, and then you must provide a flowchart, okay? I think flowchart is should be attached as a separate document in the proposal. Cannot be too detailed or technical, okay? Too detailed meaning that uh, because you prepare your methodology based on your literature review, okay? If you can prepare a very precise and detailed uh, research flowchart, meaning that some may, could be someone already solved it or you actually copy from somewhere. They will suspect uh, you actually, they may question you, do we still need to carry out the method because it seems like already have the answer, okay? So you cannot put too detailed, okay? Of course, cannot be too simple also, lah, okay? And cannot be too technical, lah, okay? So I mean, must be reasonable, lah, okay? Must show the complete process, or procedure how to achieve all the research objective. Okay, the best way is when you come up with the flow chart. Okay, let's say your flow chart in a vertical direction. So from the top to the bottom of the flow chart, maybe the first part of the flow chart you have to highlight this is to achieve the objective one, and then second part of the flow chart, second um in the middle um uh, the middle part you can put this is for objective two, and then the last part for objective three or maybe you have objective four. Okay, you have to put in the really detail okay make it clear in the flow chart which portion of the flow chart for which objective okay must show the final output of research towards the end of the flow chart okay so you must know put in the end for the flow chart okay cannot be the flow chart is hanging eh? okay research activities and milestone okay so have to be careful research activity the difference between research activity and research objective okay so every research objective can be achieved through a few research activities, okay? And then once you have uh, have done a few, uh, uh, a certain number of research activities, so you, will, you should have one milestone, okay? You, have, you have, should have one milestone to be achieved. So all these things, you need to prepare a gun chart, okay? You need to prepare a gun chart. Usually milestones should be prepared every six months, okay? So let's see what is it. Strongly encouraged to have one milestone to be achieved for every six months. Why is it every six months should have one milestone? Because this is actually to ease you to, to ease your preparation of progress report, okay? Because every six months, we need to prepare a progress report. So if you have one milestone for every six months, so actually very easy for you to prepare the report because uh, every six months, you have achieved one milestone. Of course, this is not compulsory and also depends on the nature of your project. Some project, maybe you can only achieve one milestone in one year, okay? I don't know, okay? But if you can, you can put, you can split the thing into every six months, okay? Strongly recommended by Utah, lah. okay? For progress report preparation and submission purposes, okay? Purposes, lah. okay? At least four milestones for two-year project. If you put six, six months for one milestone, so for two-year project, of course, they have four milestones. 
at least uh, and six mountain for three years project at least uh, okay if you can have you want to have more i think also can or you have lesser if you can justify also no problem however should follow and cover the methodologies research activities one by one okay so the milestone actually uh, under each milestone you have the activities research activities and then the uh, some uh, a set of research activity actually will use to achieve the objective Okay, so actually you need to make sure that your research objective, okay, must be linked to your research methodology, and then your research methodology must be linked to the research activity and milestone. Okay, must be very clear, and then you can people can tell. Okay, so don't make a very confused uh, gun chart. Okay, milestone should not include literature review. Okay, so milestone under the gun chart should not include. The literature review okay preparation of manuscript meaning that you want to prepare let's say you want or by after one year i want to prepare my first journal article you don't need to mention okay in the milestone okay under milestone uh, not don't put at the preparation of manuscript preparation uh, meaning that uh, you can actually put in um uh, preparation or submission of final report or uh, attending conference. All these things don't need to put under milestone, okay? But you can put under research activities, okay? You can put under research activities, but it's not under research milestone. Milestone is the bigger achievement of your research proposal. So milestone is supposed to be uh, to achieve objective one. So this is the milestone, or to achieve part of objective one also the milestone okay those like literature literature review preparation of manuscript preparation or submission of final or progress report attending conferences all these things are supposed to be under research activities not milestone okay so for three years project i'm not sure for 2024 you when you prepare a proposal you need to come up with the proposed starting date and ending date so this one the date actually i think uh will be given by ips allah okay when the announcement made by mohi for the next cycle okay so you must follow uh, if ips say your your proposal the project should start from first of september so make sure you put first of september uh, you don't go and put first of october okay so you must follow the instruction from ips uh, so that we can standardize for the whole university and also similar with other university okay so expected result and benefit okay so of course i understand that not all the research proposal can come up with the new theory or new formula or we have a very high novelty okay if you have it it's good but if you cannot get such a research proposal you can also replace by new findings and new knowledge okay new findings and new knowledge for example new theory maybe you say i come up with a formula to solve a certain problem the formula is from myself okay so there is new uh, novel theory but if you use the existing method or you do some minor just modification or or actually exact exactly the existing same with the existing method but the method never apply in your field okay the method never been applied in your field so if you adopt that method in your proposal okay to solve the problem in your study field which is actually different from those uh already uh those application in other field for the same uh formula or same model or same theory okay so this one considered as a new findings or new knowledge okay so of course if you can get the first one novel theory is the best okay if no i understand it's not easy to come up with a fundamental type of research proposal okay so new findings new knowledge mean this is the thing as i mentioned just now okay you still can come up you can try to put up a proposal Okay, impact statement on the uh, quintuple index. This is very important. Okay, the quintuple index actually, uh, as I mentioned just now, the five impacts, society, academia, government, industry, and environment. You must justify one by one. Don't put a lump sum statement to cover all the five. Okay, because you're already towards the end of the proposal. You already put up so much effort, okay, from A to, to Y. How are you want to simply do for the Z? Okay, so make sure this is very important because not I would say not all the evaluator, from, especially those from Mohi, they could they are the same exactly same feel with you, you know, because they may not understand your full fully understand your methodology. Okay, but they may actually look at this impact statement to know actually what is the impact of your research. 
okay, to these five sectors. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, maximum 150 words. Okay, so you have five sectors. Maybe each sector you have 30 words. Okay, but can uh, not necessarily must be balanced. Lah, okay, some you may can have more than one, more than two sentences. Okay, so it depends. Lah, okay, but at least every single index or every single impact, you must have one or two sentences to justify okay, how your project important to the social, important to the academy, important to the government, industry, and also the environment. Okay, environment means the environment type of impact of this thing. Put in all the above five impact to show the significance of your research, but must be directly related to the project. Lah, okay, it must be related to your project. Okay, so this is important. Lah. So uh, please put all the five impact one by one. Publication as these two index journal, okay, one at least two index journal, one of them must be indexed in Web of Science, okay, WOS. Okay, for social side, I think it's as oh ah yeah, social side also the same, right? You can put in two papers also under WOS. I think no problem, not necessarily must be say one WOS and one Scopus. I think it's not reasonable. Uh, I think it's doesn't, doesn't make sense, right? Okay. Doesn't matter. Then they ask you must put one WOS, one Scopus. If you put two WOS, they reject you. Okay, doesn't matter. But in order to protect yourself, okay, maybe we should not be too ambitious. Okay, maybe it's good we just fulfill the minimum requirement. Okay, as long as you can fulfill the minimum requirement, you can score the mark. Okay, you put two WOS compared to you put one WOS plus one Scopus. I believe you may get the same mark. Okay, because one WS and one Scopus already fulfill the requirement. Okay, why we put one WS, one Scopus, I would say that maybe Scopus is not as tough as the WS to get published in WS. So because towards the end of the project, you need to prepare your final report. Okay, when you prepare your final report, you need to justify and you need to show the proof that you have already achieved all the outputs, okay, including the talent, which is the postgraduate student, and also your publication. So try to put the minimum requirement for this case, huh? one WS, one Scopus, or ERA, or my site. Okay, even you cannot, you don't want to put Scopus, also can. Okay, you can put my site. Okay, but at least one WOS. Okay, specific and potential application. Okay. Okay, so this one you need to justify also because towards the end, they will say the output of your research. Okay. The potential of the output okay to be used in the industry okay so you can justify lah, okay how the your output help in your consultancy work or how the work actually help in uh, the university or help the nation okay not necessarily must be physical type of model or product okay and then research finding knowledge must also do lah, okay so not necessarily must have a physical product or model Okay, maybe some statement or photos from research uh, for, for social science or some fighting, okay, new thing, okay, also can be the, um, can be applied, okay, because some fighting, some new fighting or some knowledge can be, could be useful for the policy makers, okay, especially those from the social science, okay, so I think this is very important, you need to justify also, this is as important as the five impacts and I mentioned just now. Okay, intelligent properties, this is not compulsory. Better don't put if you do not expect any from your research. Okay, because if you face problem when you submit your final report, IPSR will stop to, we will, will, will not close your final report until you apply for the IP. Okay, Intel, intellectual property. Of course, uh, depends on if some of you actually are very confident to come up with something, you can actually patent it or you can apply it at least for copyrights. Okay, so you can put. Okay, but this is not compulsory. Okay, even in the assessment, this is also not compulsory. If you didn't put any IP, it won't jeopardize or reduce your mark. Okay, this is important. Okay, but maybe if you put, you may have additional mark, depends on the evaluator. Okay, but if you didn't put any because your research work won't have any IP, it won't actually jeopardize your application. Okay, your application will still be processed. Okay, cannot apply for any allocation or budget under the FRGS. Lah. Even though you want to put IP, you cannot put the budget to for the application, IP application under the FRGS budget. Okay, if you want to spend money for the IP application, that Budget should be from some some other some other clan or from your university. Okay, cannot put the budget uh, under FRGS budget. You put the okay the the fees to apply.
apply for IP. OK, you are not allowed. OK, all promised IPs need to be delivered. OK, make sure whatever you put two IP, you need to deliver two. You put three, you must deliver three. OK, access to the equipment and materials. OK, all kind of software, hardware, data, images and information. OK, either consumable materials, etc. OK, this all thing actually is under material. OK, or small equipment. As I say, hardware, software. OK, all this actually to show the university are supportive in research. Lah. OK, so you have to show that okay, you cannot be all the small thing also. For example, you want to run experiment. So all from A to Z, all the single part experimental type of equipment must be from the gland. OK, OK, unless you can justify this is something new and then your university uh, doesn't have uh, the the equipment, okay. Otherwise, actually, if you just if if you put everything from the, uh put in the clan, or you want to purchase this from A to Z to another one, so it should show the university actually not supportive in research lah. Okay, let's say for example computer, of course you are not allowed. Okay, so if you say you want to have a computer, cannot be your university doesn't even have a computer. OK, so when you justify your budget for equipment and material, you have to be very careful. OK, fill in the type. OK, you have the software, hardware, data, etc. description. OK, and also the owner, location and address. For example, if you have the computer, you need, but you, you are going and you're going to do the numerical modeling. So you need to put like, where you actually you can have the computer at which if you have the partner from other university, so the computer either at your institution or in other institution, OK, you have to put the location of the equipment and also the address and who is the owner. OK, uh, even a software like MATLAB, OK, or maybe uh, like any other software. OK, you have the software you also need to put. OK, you must show it, you know, you cannot be just keep quiet. Even though you say, oh, I already have the computer, I have the MATLAB. I no need to mention in the in the proposal. Actually, no, because from the proposal, if the proposal need the software needs the hardware. Okay, needs the need need the equipment. So you have to show to the evaluator, show to Mohi, show the proof that you already have this thing. Because this one actually will give them the confidence that you can carry out the research. Okay, because they don't want after in the end of the project you say I don't have that equipment. You didn't approve the equipment for me, so I cannot carry out the research. OK, so even though you have the equipment, OK, you have the material, whatever software you need to mention. OK, you need to mention you have, that you have to let the evaluator know you have this type of equipment and the material. OK, do not leave it blank. OK, there's one section for you to fill in the equipment and materials. Do not leave it blank. OK, budget maximum 250,000. 250, OK. For the whole project, uh, 250,000. Okay, cannot uh, exceed 250,000. So for the wood under the budget, you have different type of woods. Wood 11000 is the allowance for the student. Okay, maximum 2,000 per month for master student, 2,500 per month for PhD student is maximum. But of course, you won't put less than that, right? You will put the maximum value. Lah. Okay, so you don't put 1,000. 900 for master. OK, just put the maximum 2000 for PhD 2500. OK, and then the second word is 21000 for traveling and transportation. So be careful traveling and transportation. Let's say if you want to go for conferences, either local or overseas conference. OK, make sure you put the accommodation, your air ticket, OK, your toll fees, all these things under this word. OK, under traveling and transportation conference fees. OK, because you go to conference, you need to pay conference fee. Conference fees is not under this word. Huh? OK, we will mention that one later. OK, so cannot exceed 40% of the total budget. OK, of course, the system now is very smart. If your budget exceeded 40%, they will uh, prompt you, they will actually warn you. Lah. OK, you need to reduce it accordingly. OK, cover accommodation, meal allowance, and also transportation. OK, local conference for PI core researcher and student. You can send your student for local conference. No problem. OK, Mohi will pay for the student. OK, you can also send your core researcher to attend the conference. But this is for local conference only. Lah. Conference organized in Malaysia. OK, can put up two local conferences, maximum two local conferences. OK, actually, there's no inside the guideline. Actually, there's, they didn't put any limitation. OK, so I think the best you just put one or two. Lah. You don't put three, lah, right? OK, it's not a good impression. OK, if do not put any overseas conference, lah. if you don't put any overseas conference, you put two local conference, meaning that you either put 
two local conference or you put one local conference plus one overseas conference. OK, if you totally don't put any conference, I think this is also very bad impression. How come you don't want to present your work to the people? OK, so I think attending conference is compulsory, so you can put either two local conference or one local conference plus one overseas conference. OK, if you are going for two years project, maybe just one conference you do. If one conference can be one local or one overseas. OK, if you think two years time, you may not have sufficient time to attend two conferences. OK, but at least you have to put one. OK, allocation for one year for first year and onwards. So usually local conference, you can put the allocation means the budget under year one. OK, meaning that you can attend local conference even during the year one of the project. OK, overseas conference cannot. Overseas conference must be from year two onwards. You cannot put the budget for overseas conference under year one, okay, first year, okay? And then again, for those who are the evaluator or internal evaluator, I noticed that last year, some of the evaluator, they request the applicants to attach the quotation for conference, okay? No need quotation for conference for the application. You just need to mention how much you need to spend for the conference, okay? The conference fee, maybe 3,000, and then the accommodation, the meal and transportation. OK, no need to attach any quotation for the conference. OK, oversee conference for PI and core research only. Student is not allowed. Huh? OK, one time only. OK, allocation from year two or second years and onwards. Either you can put in year two or year three. Cannot exceed 20% of the total budget because we know that going traveling to oversee the, the allocation, the budget could be high, but also cannot exceed 20%. OK, no need quotation again. OK, next is the field work. OK, if you want to conduct any field work, OK, you also need to travel, OK, need the accommodation. OK, so you can put under this one. Local meeting, data collection related to the project only. OK, local meeting, uh, don't go, don't propose the budget for overseas meetings. Uh, OK, they won't approve it. OK, don't, don't even try. OK, no overseas meeting data collection. OK, if you want to collect data from some other place in the world, you can, you should have the, uh, correspond, co uh, collaborator with you, and then don't don't forget, FRGS they actually uh, restrict you to conduct the work in Malaysia only. So no justification. You need to collect data from overseas. Okay, so don't put the overseas meeting data collection. Okay, what two o two four zero 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 land rental. Okay, sometimes you may need to rent the laboratory. Okay, if possible, if you have the Collaborator from uh, you, you need the lab, but Utah doesn't have the lab. You may actually check the lab in other university and then invite the university staff to be your collaborator. Then you don't need to pay the money. Okay, then you don't need to pay the money because sometimes the evaluator may think why you need to have the money, especially those the rental very high rental. Why don't you just invite? That especially if you put your core researcher USM or UM for example, and then suddenly you put. You need to rent the laboratory from UM or USM, and then you need to how much the budget. So the evaluator will question you, since you have the collaborator from that university, why don't you actually can get it free? Why you want to have to have to pay? OK, so you have to be very careful. OK, so computer workstation, OK, rental can be paid to the collaborators, university and institution. OK, computer and workstation also, uh, if you want to put rental for computer and workstation, have to be very careful. So I really actually don't, don't, uh, in my opinion, I think we better don't put any budget for computer and workstation unless it is unless it is very necessary, and then you have a very strong justification. Let's say you are doing some numerical modeling work, okay, and then there's no laptop, uh, okay, no laptop, okay. You can apply for computer and workstation still possible, but no laptop, okay. But are uh, directly involved and used in the research. So you must have the very strong justification. You cannot say I need a workstation or computer to do the uh, data sorting. So they may question oh, your university don't even have a computer for you to do the data sorting. Why you need to apply for budget? Okay, unless you say I need to have a very high end workstation to do the modeling work, which actually uh, uh, need a very high end workstation, which the university we, we don't have it. Okay, but as I say, Majority of the university or most of the university, they should have the workstation. They have the computer lab, so they have to be very careful. OK, if possible, don't take the risk to apply for budget. 
okay, for this computer and workstation. Okay, must provide justification and quotation, one copy only. Okay, we know that if you want to apply to purchase something, you need to have three quotation, right? Okay, this is the typical practice, but for this proposal, okay, FRGS, you only need to provide one copy or one quotation only because they just want the indication about the price, okay, of the items. Okay, they are not going to do the purchase, purchasing for you already. So you just need to indicate them because you say, let's say you want to buy equipment 5,000. So at least you provide one quotation to show that the cost is 5,000. Okay, so only one copy of a quotation will do. Okay, materials and supplies. Okay, only for materials and supplies such as data consumable, purchase new software. So be careful. Huh? Purchase new software. What is the difference between material supply and this? Um, the uh, material supply. Okay, never mind. I mentioned later. Okay, material supply meaning that if you material and supply meaning that this is consumable or data. Okay, if you want to collect some data from the government agency, so the data is under material under this word. Okay, if you want to purchase a new software, new software actually is very subjective. Is this, you can say as a, you can call it as an equipment or you actually can call it as a consumable thing because software actually will have the expiry date. OK, so that's why if you want to purchase a new software and then the cost is less than 5000, you can put them under this category. OK, if you want to purchase a new software, OK, you but the cost of the new software less than 5000, you can put it under this category, this wood. OK must provide justification and quotation again, okay? And one quotation will do, okay? Okay, this is the one word, 2,000, uh, 28,000. Maintenance and minor repair services, okay? This is, if you have a computer or you have the lab equipment, you want to repair them, okay? I want to do the maintenance, okay? You can put under this word. Repairing and modification must be conducted when the project is still active. OK, so meaning that you want to do the repairing modification work of the equipment. So it must be during the research period. Right? You cannot claim after the research period already over. OK, let's say already over three years, then only you go and claim for the repairing work or the cost. You are not allowed to do that. Right? Any claim after the project have been completed is not allowed. Right? OK, last next one is the 29,000 wood. Special services. Okay, so this is the what you put your conference fees. Okay, you put your conference fees. Meaning that if you want to attend a conference, you must put the accommodation, the meal allowance, transportation under the traveling and transportation wood, and then the conference fees under this special services. Okay, to pay conference fees. Okay, one overseas conference per project year two onwards. To be advised to put one local conference per project as well year one onwards. Printing. Hospital hospitalities, honorarium. If you want to invite speaker, okay, you can pay them the honorarium, okay. But you have the must have the justification, okay. Professional services, okay. For example, uh, including the uh, publication, okay. Consultancy fees, data processing fees, okay. Renew or maintain existing software. So just now, this one material and supply is purchase new software, okay. So this one is renew. Or maintain, renew min, and maintain same thing, uh, existing software. So it should be put under special service. Okay, meaning that you already have the software, but you need to renew it. Okay. In the application form, okay, if you see under the under this word, uh, 29,000, in the application form, okay, under services and consultancy, consultancy, okay, you need to put the conference fees, printing, okay, some project involved printing. Uh, okay, let's say you want to do questionnaire and then you insist your questionnaire in hard copy. OK, so the printing cost supposed to be put under here. OK. And then also second one, you will see short cost. OK, short term cost. OK, I don't know why in the guideline they still even in the application form, they allow us to put in propose, put in budget for short term cost. But from the Mohi side, OK, because I am the external evaluator for Mohi, the instruction given to us actually no short cost is allowed. OK, because the justification is you are supposed to be the expert in your research field. So you should not. You should, should not need. You should not need any short cost. You should not need to attend any short cost. So I'm not sure this one. So maybe we can confirm double check with Mohi. OK, through IPSR. But I think 
if not necessary, don't put any budget for the short cost. Lah. Okay, if you really need it, you double check with IPSR and then confirm you need to provide a quotation and a very strong justification. Okay, and then under this special services also, you can actually ask for allocation for the com for the journal page charges. Okay, means publication fees lah, number three. So again, as I say, okay, uh, don't put any journal under the Frontier, Hindawi, and MBDI. Okay, because these three publisher already banned by Mohi. Okay, proof reading fees, publication fees. So you can put in publication fees and proof reading. For publication fees, please put not more than 8,000, uh, maximum 8,000 of total. Cannot put 8,000 per paper, two papers, 16,000. No, maximum 8,000 overall of total. So you can have either if you want to put two papers, either paper, one of the one of the paper can have the publication fees, another one no, or you put six thousand and two thousand. Okay, maximum eight thousand of total. Okay, so avoid the three publisher. Okay, this is for one journal article Q one or Q two only. Okay, cannot because the we understand that the publication fees, especially now the currency, the Malaysian currency ring is really low. So sometimes the publication fee actually exceed ten thousand. Okay, the justification from Mohi is the publication fees should not be paid by the Mohi alone. So the university should have the supplement and talk up. So that's why they only allow okay, you to put 8,000 in maximum. Okay, cannot cover full payment. University must support by paying some portions. Okay, university can talk up if budget from FRGS is not enough. So this is their justification. Okay, you cannot say 8,000 is not sufficient. I, I must put 12,000. Okay, I can even show the quotation, the proof from the publisher. Okay, no. Okay, even though you show 12,000 from the publisher, the proof, you still only can put 8,000 maximum. Okay, the best is don't put any. Okay, go for those. Uh, Subscrip subscription type of uh, paper. Okay. Okay. Short term, as I mentioned, short term cost, I'm not so sure. That's why I put it here. So you can read the slide. Lah, okay. If you can, you want to put in the short term cost training, you can look, read this slide. Okay. I will skip this one now. Okay. Uh, wood 35,000 accessories and equipment. So some may confuse between these accessories and equipment with the material and supply okay to buy special accessory or equipment if you want to buy a workstation or computer you should put it here okay if you want to put a buy a software more than five thousand just now less than five thousand new software less than five thousand we put under the supply and materials so if the software is more than five thousand you have to put under this wood okay accessories and equipment okay must provide justification and quotation one copy only okay cannot exceed 40% of the total budget. Okay. So you are not allowed to apply or use budget for the following items, to pay annual fees for your professional bodies, to pay reference material, including to purchase book or article. Okay, book article should purchase by your library, it's not by Mohi. To buy ICT, okay, for handphone, to pay the phone bill, okay, printing machine, all these things, no. Huh? Okay, to buy utilities, to pay utilities bill, okay, to buy office equipment, stationery, paper, okay, table and chair, you are not allowed to do that. Okay, to buy storage devices, okay, a cabinet, okay, or you want even to, to buy a CD, pen drive, okay, you are not allowed. Okay, to pay rental for space or facilities, okay, meaning that if unless the lab you are going to rent or the facilities you are going to rent is actually out of the university of any of the PI or core researcher, then you are allowed. If the facilities actually located at the core researcher or PI university, so you are not allowed to apply for any rental. Okay, to pay filing or processing fee for IP, not allowed. To pay administrative charges and expenses, you want to hire a clerk to hire an assistant for you, not allowed. Okay, to pay or buy anything not related to the research. Okay, additional information. Okay, patent search. This is also part of the the requirement in the form. Okay, strongly encourage. Okay, so I believe you should do this one. Uh, patent search. Okay. However, if the patent search not done by the applicant, the panel is required to advise them to do so during the resubmission. This is the slide I prepare for the evaluator. Uh. So if you didn't prepare the patent search, confirm our internal internal evaluator. Okay, internal Utah evaluator will advise you to do it. 
okay attach simply simplify pattern search report so there is a report standard report you need to fill in okay you need to fill in the report after you search the pattern search okay pattern search actually is very important because uh too many uh existing uh people doing the research i show you something show like uh, your research not important if too little maybe feel like very high risk so the best number maybe few hundred or maybe close to 100 type of patterns okay if only one or two people done you can only search one or two patterns existing pattern so you come up your research could be very risky okay because nobody done it before so whether you can achieve or not it become a big question mark okay if the pattern search come up with few thousand three thousand or even ten thousand so meaning that a lot of people already done it why you still need to come up with this research okay so please try to understand this pattern search and then get a good key in the good keywords okay you need to key in the keywords of your research then only you can search it okay and then you come up with the report okay research collaborators from industry or from agency organization strongly encourage even though not compulsory okay and then must attach the letter of intent you have to ask your collaborator prepare a letter of intent from their institute, not from Utah, okay? Let's say you invite someone from Madi, from Narim, okay? You must ask them to come up with a letter from them, say, to show their intent to join the research, okay? Either from the government agency or NGO or government organization or from industry, okay? Must have the letter of intent. The letter head must be from the industry company or the organization. It's not the Utah letter head. Okay, strongly encouraged, not compulsory, but for your information, you will get extra mark. Okay, scoring high mark is very important to secure the client. Okay, because they will have the cutting mark. Okay, 90% and above, then only they consider. If you score less than 90%, then they won't consider. Just example, right? So you try to score as high as possible. Okay. Risk assessment also compulsory. Okay, don't put all high high risk in technical, high risk in timing, high risk in budget. Okay, then you will be in high risk lah. Okay, so don't put that lah. So must be reasonable. Some you just put medium, some you put low. La. Try to avoid high risk lah. Okay, but if you want to put all low, I uh, up to you lah. Okay, but usually I think put too low one medium or two medium one low should be reasonable and compulsory uh, this one will, will give you will score some mark okay so that's all from my presentation of the day so now i pass back to uh prof sumati or ips uh, and then we open for q a thank you hi thank you very much that was very interesting and very useful for us insightful on the application procedure and also guidelines of FIBS. So I think we slightly early, all right? So we can start uh, straight away the Q&A section. There were a few questions in the chat and actually I've already answered most of it. So maybe now we open the floor for those who want to speak up and ask your questions directly to you. So questions, please uh, switch on your mic. I mean, you can switch on your mic and go ahead with the questions to perform. Members and participants. The uh, latest question for you. Do I need do I need to uh, to answer the question in the chatting box? Uh, I already answered most of oh, it. Oh, okay. The last one only I didn't answer, so maybe the last one. Oh. For industry collaborators, if we have MOU signed, can we attach the MOU or still need a letter of intent to participate in the proposal? If not mistaken, in the application form, okay, there is a box for you to tick and then attach the letter of intent. So I believe that even though you have the MOU, it's good to have the letter of intent because we don't want to take the risk. Okay, because as I say, when you when your proposal reach Mohi, okay, we don't know what is the how the evaluator. Some evaluator they may accept MOU. Some maybe they insist to have the letter of intent. So if possible, try to get the letter of intent. Okay, at least you secure and you make sure you fulfill the requirement. Okay, this is my advice. Lah. If you really don't have, cannot get it, then you just attend, attach the MOU. Okay, but they actually stat, stated clearly in the application form, they need the letter of intent. So it's good to have the letter of intent. Okay, in order not to just uh, jeopardize your application. Uh, 
just to add on on that, uh, the letter of intent is not oh. from Utah. The letter say should be from the company. Yeah, so must be from the company. Yeah. You cannot prepare your own letter of intent using Utah letterhead and then ask the collaborator to sign. No, it must be from their side with their letterhead. Okay, and then... Um, and you have to specify the details in the intent letter saying that I am mm. so company, Sanjay Braha, mm. who have to work and collaborate together with Utah in this mm. blah, 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 title and so on. Uh, and I have to many... Have to, uh, yeah, I have to... Possible add-on details like what are they going to sponsor or what they are going to give as a value added in the collaboration. Mm. Their, their scope of work and also maybe you need to mention the title of the project in the letter. Okay, and then how to conduct a pat patent search? Uh, this one. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think if you go into the application form, you can click on it. Usually you key in your keywords. Okay, you key in your keywords. Okay, some keywords, if you put too many keywords, actually the the list of the patent will be very long. Okay, as I say, if your list of the patent over 1,000 is something in, actually indicate or imply that the research already done by many people. Okay, if only less than 10 patent in the list, then maybe uh, it's good because it's very high novelty, but however, it's actually make some evaluator they may think like this is something new, so they actually may have to worry that you may not be able to achieve the the, ob the objective to produce the to carry out the research so it's actually quite subjective okay the best maybe uh, as i say 90 80 or over 100 or one or 200 should be reasonable actually you can play around you can just key in the keywords okay so you can play around to get the best number of patent okay patent means the work actually already patent and then in before you okay for, by the previous researcher okay and then there is a form you need to fill in. Okay. And then three of the three blacklist publisher. This one maybe can can IPSR confirm because so far we didn't receive any circulation from IPSR about these three publisher. We, I so far I only got it from my friend from other university. Uh. Okay, this uh, at the moment it is only for uh, Institute Pengadian Awam, uh, Institute Pengadian Tinggi Awam. The letter was specially dedicated to IPTA and they did not mention about IPTS. So, mm. as of today, uh, Utah do not take any action on blacklisting any publishers and so on based on that letter because, as far as we know, that it, the letter was meant for IPTA, which means that IPTA. Uh, whoever being granted with the grant from ministry, they should not publish in certain publishers. But they are still skeptical about it because why they only mention IPTA but they did not mention IPTS. So uh, some of the power uh, institution has uh, written to uh, JPT to actually request uh, more feedback. They get the feedback to this. Okay. However, I think I think for Utah side, no problem for the publish publication. But however, now we are applying for the grant to Mohi. So Mohi is the government. So since Mohi already come up with the circulation, they 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 ban the three publisher. So I think we avoid the three publisher in your application. Okay, they are Frontier. Okay, Frontier. Maybe I try. MDPI, Frontier. Hindawi. Eh? I'm not sure about the spelling. Okay. So we don't put any article, okay, under publication, okay, under this three publisher, because we apply to Mohi. Mohi already depend them, okay. So the minimum requirement for publication one WOS and one from uh, Scopus and other is applicable for both two year and three project. Yes. Okay. They didn't specify one. Two years project, only one publication, three years project, then only two publication. So either two years or three years project, they also put in uh, two publication. Okay, just my opinion. If you can come up with a proposal, must well you put in three years, get a PhD student. Okay, because the evaluation process, actually, they never divide the two years and the three years into two categories. Okay, the evaluation actually will, will be done, carry out, okay, mix up with the two year and three years project. Okay, so if you can come up with the proposal, 
why don't you just add one more objective to make it three years? Okay, if possible. Lah. If you really cannot make it, you, you think the research scope actually cannot be expanded to three years, then no choice. Lah. You can to put two years. But no matter two years or three years, you still need to put two publications. Okay. Uh, there was a question on the uh, nowadays index general open access fee charge is quite expensive. How much can we apply for in the grant to cover this? So actually, eight, eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, eight thousand. So uh, I say preferably we do not put budget to publish in paid journal or for paid charges open access. Like preferably we go for subscription because I think sooner or later Moti is going to come out with this to establish on paid journal because most of us. The publication in the Hindawi, Frontier, MDPI are all paid journals, not only open access but paid journals. Lah. So we actually discourage for publication, but if you want to put, you can go ahead and put maximum of RM10K. Mm. It's, 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 it's the overall, uh, not per paper. Okay? It's yeah. the overall, but not paper. Okay. According to Mohi, the, our, the chief of EK, uh, Technology and Kuruchutra, uh, they say overall uh, should not be exceeded 8,000. Okay, I'm not sure this the coming year. Okay, now maybe they ban the three publisher, they maybe even further reduce the cost. Okay, we see how. Okay, we see how. Okay, if a two years project, is it not entitled for overseas conference? Yes, you are entitled to go for overseas country, overseas conference, even though two years project, but only can go for one, okay, one overseas conference. And it must be from second year must be in second year because two years project means you cannot go overseas conference in year one, so you can only go for year two. Okay, so you have only one year to attend the conference. Okay, you, you don't have year three. Okay, all two years and three years project are entitled for overseas conference. Okay, oh sorry, you already answered, but no. Okay. I have, uh, I have Dr. Dr. Yu, uh, I have received the comment from panel stated that the proposal can be further refined for further submission. Okay, this is a very subjective and poor comment, I would say. Sorry to say. Huh? In this situation, it is advisable to resubmit the last year proposal and further refine for the. Oh, this is from Mohi, right? Okay, so it's really poor comment. Actually, they just, uh, they didn't specify okay, the problem or weaknesses of your proposal. So you can, whether you can further refine, after further refinement for further consideration. I think okay, right, Prof. Mati. So, means last year submission fell. So, this year, uh, Dr. Dr. Yu want to resubmit the same proposal. Yeah, can, but uh, make some refinement and change a bit. Uh, the, uh, don't be exactly the same. Mm. But what kind of refinement? So, you have to, if they didn't specify, you need to read through and go through. La. Okay, you need to detect the problem yourself, la, uh, Dr. Yu. I said perform, we, we have a system where they can detect uh, uh, whether it's 100% ma matching to the previous uh, uh, proposed mm. system. So preferably if we put exactly the same title and so on, it will be captured as 100%. So there's no modification or enhancement. So preferably there's some small enhancement here and there. Mm. So the title. So the title should be refined. Uh, uh, title, you should revise the title and maybe the wording for the objective. Uh, try to revise it. Uh. We don't want to take the, the, the risk. Uh, okay. Because we don't know actually what happened when the proposal reached Mohi. Because the proposal actually will send, we have maybe over over 100 or over 1,000 of revaluators. Okay, all the revaluators, they have different type of understanding. Okay, so we, we try to uh, reduce the, the risk. Lah. Okay, we want to secure the grant. So we try to make the best. Okay. Mm, I think there's another question which is also very interesting. What are the specific criteria that we should adhere to when applying uh, to attend international conference? So actually they have a uh, very specific that you must publish full paper in WOS or Scopus Index Journal proceeding and you must have a black and white letter from the organizer saying that they have chosen your paper to be published in the Scopus Index Journal or WOS Journal. Then you can be entitled to attend the international conference. Mm. And uh, for FRGS, the approval is RMC level. For other grants, there are certain grants that the approval is done by KPT, not RMC. Yeah? For example, LRGS, 
if you want to go for international conference, the approval comes from KPT, not RMC. But for FIGS, it's much simpler. The approval comes from our RMC or IPSR, so shouldn't be a problem. But you have to give us a black and white from the organizer saying that your paper has been chosen for oral presentation, full paper published in WOS or Scope. Okay, any more questions? Yes, sir, I saw somebody raise their hand, then by the time I go to the uh, list, the hand was not there. So, anyone would like to ask? Yeah, now I think somebody raised their hand again. One second. Yeah, Dr. Tan, please proceed. Yes, Dr. Huang, I have one question. If let's say now the grant approved already and we apply the time we put PhD students. So, oh. when we engage the student, the time, the student can only register as a master, then afterward only we do com uh, conversion to PhD. Is it, uh, can we do like that way or not? Can, can. Okay, this is the thing actually I'm doing now. Okay, because my grant also for a PhD student, a three years grant. So now actually I engage a master student, but I convert the, the student actually get the conversion to PhD now. So you are allowed to do that. However, for the payment, okay, they will pay the PhD, will pay according to the rate lah, for master student. Because if you if your grant is for a PhD student, the payment is supposed to be 2500 Okay, but when you engage a master student, okay, at the beginning, so the you can only pay 2000 Okay, and then after that, once the conversion is successful, so you can actually increase the payment to 2500 Okay, so in other words, actually the, 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 the 500 Different, the, the difference of the 500 between master and PhD student will be burned or unless you ex extend your grant and then you can use the money. OK, but you are allowed to do that. OK, you are allowed to get in the master student and then convert to PhD. But you need to get the approval from IPSR okay, through uh, Inchik Muhi, uh, Muni, uh, Inchik Muni. OK, thank you. Uh -huh. okay, we have more questions. Uh... Out of all specific guidelines and requirements, how many percentages is by luck? <laughs> Dr. William's question. Eh? Uh. What do you mean, eh, Dr. William? <laughs> Chances of you getting the grant? Which one? William, William, Dr. William, out of all specific guidelines. Uh, uh, yeah, just wondering whether, whether out of these all requirements, right? Whether oh, by luck also. I was. Uh, I don't know because we very much depend on the on the on the examiner or the professor. If we get someone easy, then of course it's easy to get the grant. Uh. Just something is it also by luck? Uh, not to not 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 to say by luck uh, I would say let let's say I share my uh, uh my experience. Okay, first, uh, if you can answer all the question or queries from your internal evaluator from Utah, and then because. More his side actually they can access to the to to the assessment okay the internal assessment so make sure you answer all the internal assessment the comment okay from our, our internal assessor okay before you submit the grant to Mohi and then actually as I mentioned just now make sure you complete the form as much as possible don't miss out any single point to score the mark okay let's say the five impact factors you must certify strongly okay pattern search you must do it if possible to get the collaborator okay all these things you must put it because the the selection or the how the the way they do the finalist actually based on the score by the given by the evaluator okay so it's very important i was i want i want to say uh the because different evaluator even though for the same answer if you pass the same uh answer script to the two examiner to marks. OK, if they didn't follow the exactly the marking scheme, OK, maybe the mark given will be different. So even one mark different, one score 90, one give you 89. OK, so 89 one will not be shortlisted if the cutting point is 90. So I would say that the only thing we can do, the best we can do is try to score as much as possible, try to fulfill every single part, OK? of the application form okay don't miss out any single part okay because one mark actually will make a huge difference okay if you say by luck uh, i would say that as i say lah, if your evaluator give you 89 mark another evaluator give 
another proposal 90 mark, actually the quality of the two proposals, they are the same. So I was, if you say this is the luck, you don't have the luck, then I have no objection. Okay, but I believe if you have a good proposal, the chance is higher. Okay, so make sure you don't miss out any single part of the uh, in the application form. This is very important. Okay, because majority thank of you, the Prof. Ready, thank uh, you, okay, okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, next question for Huang. Does that mean that we must publish the paper first before we can attend in the international conference? Huh? <laughs> Actually, nowadays for the international conference, they are very, very strict. Uh, perform, maybe I can add on. Uh, perform. Uh -uh. Uh, so, what happens is that they want to see a confirmation from the organizer stating that you will be published. Normally, the organizer of a conference will only give us a letter or email saying that your paper has been accepted to the oral presentation in this uh, section, blah, 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 blah. But they will not give us a uh, black and white saying that the full paper has been vetted and uh, you are chosen to be uh, publishing in a WOS journal. So this is something that uh, up to today, all the researchers are saying like normally conference organizers do not give it to you. They will only give you this information after the conference. But unfortunately, KPT wants this confirmation letter saying that that paper that you are going to present orally will be published in a conference proceeding which is Scopus or WOS or a journal WOS or a Scopus journal WOS. So this is what they are looking for according to the subway rules and also the guideline. So it's not that you have to publish first before you can go to uh, attend, but you must have a confirmation email or letter from the organizer that your full paper has been accepted for publication in this journal or in this conference proceeding, which is Scopus Index or WS. Hope I have answered that. I think for conference paper and journal paper, uh, we usually we don't aim for a conference proceeding to become a journal article, right? If you want to fulfill the requirement for the journal article, must well you just submit directly to the journal, okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of sending to the conference and hope that the conference will select your paper and publish in the journal, okay? It's very high risk, uh, frankly speaking. Not all the conference organizers actually they keep their promise. Now, now the thing is, if you want to attend an international conference, oh. this is their criteria. If you want to attend an international conference, this is one of the criteria. Mm -hmm. That published in Scopus proceeding should not be a problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Or must, uh, uh. It's a Scopus or WOS. Yeah, you can check the the history of the previous conferences, lah. Okay, you can check their their history, lah. Go for the good conference, lah. Then should be no problem. Okay. Any questions? Questions? Any more questions? We still have time, another 15 minutes before we go for a break. Any more questions? Okay, uh, I have a few uh, common mistakes that we found out. Uh, one of them is under the publication, as what Prof. Huang says, mm. do not over-promise, okay? So, FRDS only requests you to have two publications, regardless mm two-year project or three-year project, they mm. expect you to have two publications. Mm. One must be WOS, but they did not state it is Q1, Q2, or Q3, or Q4. Okay. Mm. So if they say two, if you are really confident, you want to say you want to go for three, it's okay. But don't mm. go for over-promising, like you say you want to publish five. But you don't mention mm. five. Uh, uh, there were cases where we see in the uh, application, they say, they promised five WOS journals, you know. They thought that by putting more numbers over there, they might get extra point. Actually, no, huh? no, no, no extra point. Yeah, so the, no extra point. 
for what I know for publication, as long as you can fulfill the minimum one. Yep. So the minimum, I repeat again, one WOS journal, okay, and one minimum corpus index. It might be an index journal, huh? Both uh, not 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 necessarily scopus. Scopus could be a little bit. They have the my site or something. My <laughs> okay. They they have a list lah. They have the uh, scopus and my site. These three lah. Some are easier lah. Some are easier than scopus lah. Mm, correct. So so please do not over promise. And mm, you also yes. have cases whereby they went to put in the pattern just because thinking that is the requirement. Okay, I repeat again. FRGS just encourage you. To have a pattern. If you really think your two-year project can yield a pattern, you're confident, then you can go ahead and put it. If you are not confident, you are not encouraged to put anyway. Okay? So, you're just encouraged. So, don't ever promise a pattern. If you cannot deliver a pattern, eventually when you close your final report, you will be uh, not categorized as a good report submission and so on. Okay? Now, uh, KPT has a very strict guideline on how we evaluate progress report and also... So if let's say you didn't achieve whatever you promised, you will be falling under behind schedule or poor performance and so on. Okay. So therefore, do not go over promise. Huh? If they say two journal, then two journal. And then they say pattern filing is encouraged, not a must. So if you think can, then do it. If not, no. Huh? We have cases whereby people putting two pattern, huh? unbelievable, you know. We didn't notice and then the reviewer didn't notice, finally got accepted and then the researcher could not fulfill not even one pattern. Huh? So that is one of the cases. Okay, uh, right, I think we have a question. Is this possible that FRGS can give us some guideline example on the words that we can use in the objective? Or uh, you can actually search around in the Google fundamental research words of this thing. Okay. Um, you can search around because it's very difficult uh, to provide because different field, they may have the different. Okay. For example, to formulate, I think it's the fundamental. Okay, to develop, some people say this is not fundamental. Some actually say yes. Okay, so it depends on what you develop. Okay, I would say it so depends on what you develop. Okay, but you don't put uh, to understand, to explain. Okay, all these things actually not, not measurable. Okay. Yes, there is uh, each section, they have the marking rubric. Okay. Uh, there's another question for Huang. Huh? They're asking tempo perimatan. Okay. This tempo perimatan tinggi is only applicable for contract staff. Okay. Mm, one year at least. Contract staff, no problem. But if your contract staff, if your contract is less than a year, you are not entitled to apply. Okay. Let's, can say, be. Uh. let's say November is the application opening for this year, 2024. Opening is November. Uh, and then their are, are closing date, let's say, is January 31st. When, they are, when you are submitting on the 31st of January, your contract left only eight months, I'm sorry, you're not eligible. RMT itself will reject your application. But during the submission 31st of January, let's say your validity of your contract is one year, then you can apply. So for those who have a contract of one year yearly basis, very sorry to say, it's very difficult for you to apply because it's a one-year basis contract. Huh? Unless you're a two-year uh, contract, then it's different story. You have more time, of course. Hope maybe can, uh, maybe can join as a call, right? Yeah, call definitely yeah. can, but I mean, you want to be a PI, right? <laughs> so PI no. is very difficult. Yeah. You can only join as a call, no problem. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay, uh, also I would like to highlight on some uh, common errors. Do some similarity check after your write-up, your executive summary, your methods, your literature review section. Please take it and put into anything and check for similarity in that. You never know, you might capture 100% similarity. Yeah? So it's also good do a similarity check, which is a mm. common mistake that most of the researchers doesn't do this. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, there are a few other things that I would like to highlight. The milestone. Huh? So we prefer to have a milestone every six months because whenever we judge the progress report, right, we find it very difficult at RMC level to justify whether they achieve the milestone or not. Because some people say, I, I need one year to achieve one milestone. 
But then your progress report, you have to submit every six months. So preferably, we need a milestone which is every six months basis. That means there's a completion of something every six months. Mm. That will be easier for you. And if let's say it's a two-year project, you have four milestones or maybe three milestones, up to you. Okay, or six uh, milestones for a three-year project. That will be the best ultimately. But if you cannot, then it's fine. But we strongly suggest to have one milestone achieved. Okay, milestone is you completed some part of your research. Okay, so maybe that completion is a partial achievement of objective one. It's okay, but the milestone is only six months time. Okay, so we prefer to have this because these are the common mistakes we, we find from researchers that they might have ten milestones for two year project while it's too much, and sometimes they only have two milestones for a three year project. So we strongly advise again for two year project four milestones for three year project six months. So that will be ultimately the best. Milestone alignment. Eh? Mm, what else? Try to ensure no grammatical errors. Please run through school or grammar, uh, grammarly and so on before you put in your write up. Always do a write up before putting into the write up into the system in my grants. Eh? So do a write up outside in work. Go for grammarly or write full. Check the grammar. Then only you cut and paste into your my grants. Okay? And uh, if you are an applicant to a new area or field, ah, so this one, Prof. Wang, I think, I think you didn't highlight it on this, right, Prof. Wang, did you? Which one? There could be some researchers or applicants who are new in that area. That means he just went into this uh, venture into a new area or field which he has not done before. But he has some background on it, okay? So for yeah. those people who are this kind of applicant, Kindly ensure at least you have a conference paper published to say that you have done some work in this work before. Mm. That's why you're venturing into this. But if let's say you don't have any work, nothing has been done, suddenly you want to jump into this uh, work, it's going to be difficult. They might say that you are not relevant to the field or area. Okay? Yeah. And if you have a conference publication, then your co-researchers should be supporting more in that area in the field. I mean, you should have some professor or associate professor who's well known doing in that field. You just jump in into the field and you want to do something new, okay? And then you have your co researchers to help you more. So this is the technique. If you have something very new idea you really want to explore, but ensure you have at least one conference paper so that the funder or the reviewer thinks that you can do the work. Perform, maybe you want to add on? Yeah, yeah. Because if you totally new in the certain field, I think it's rarely happen, right? At least must be relevant to your previous research work. Okay, cannot be totally new. If really totally new, as I as mentioned by Prof just now, I think at least you must have some proof that you have actually done some, come up with some output. Okay, because otherwise they may advise you to apply for the internal seed fund. Right, they may reject you based on this reason because you should conduct the research with the internal seed fund before you come to the FRGS, which is actually at the higher level. Okay. Another thing is when you apply for this um, confirmed, as, as mentioned by Prof just now, you have to put in the core researcher, really strong core researcher, okay, to help to support you to support your research. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. Okay. And then another thing is for those who have the, I noticed that. Uh, some of us actually we already have the Utah RF before we apply for the FRGS. Okay, so could be for the same research. Okay, because Utah encourage us to apply for FRGS after you have secured the Utah RF. Okay, so be careful when you fill in the form. Okay, when you fill in the form, you need to list out the project, your existing project and your previous project. Okay, so when you list out your project, please make sure the title of your new proposal for FRGS is different from the one you for it different from the Utah RF. Because if you fill in your existing project, you fill in your Utah RF. So and then after that you apply for FRGS with the same title or look like the two projects obviously similar. Okay, so they may reject based on this uh, reason. So have to be very careful. So even though the same project, please revise the title, change the title, so that so that the two project, the FRGS and the Utah F, not does don't look like similar. Okay, this is I, what I noticed because uh there are some cases happened before. So the if we say actually 
they apply for the same project, same title. OK, they already secured the internal seed fund for this title, and then now they go come and apply for the FRGS. Actually, Mohi doesn't allow. So I think you, IPS or Utah, we have to inform all because confirm those F, Utah F holder, they will apply for the FRGS. So we already high risk. Actually, they put the same title. OK, so please don't put the same title. Thank you, Dr. Yu. Doctor, you may have a question about the FRGS versus PRGS. Does does we that one have to meet the eligibility criteria as a PA for FRGS before applying for? Or oh, this one I have to ask. <laughs> okay, yes. so prototype uh, for prototype, do you need to have the uh, fundamental research work done before? It could be FRGS, it could be some other external grant which you have used to do the fundamental work. But if you do not have any fundamental work done before with a proof, they will not uh, give you the PRGS. So in order to get the PRGS, you uh, have to have the FRGS as a supporting, uh, as a PI for before applying. Yeah, because if you are not the PI, how come you are getting somebody's idea and going doing the prototype? It also sounds, uh, what they call, uh, not ethical, correct? Uh, because normally the PI owns the fundamental work and the PI now applies for a prototype. So that is how it works. So oh, Dr. Yu, I answered you. Okay, any more questions for members? We have five minutes left. Any more questions? Okay, I think if we do not have any other questions, so we will go for a break now and we will uh, continue back at 11.10 as projected. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Ayal Fong Yufeng. Thanks a lot for your sharing and uh, kindly stay tuned everyone. We will be back at 11.10 after a short break for the next section by Ayal Professor Dr. Ku Hui Thank you.